welcome again to Pi Game Tricks. This is Python Bro, and I'm pretty excited to show you this next video. We're going to be doing a crossfade, showing you how to do a crossfade just like you would see in any other game or any other, uh, I don't know, video editing software uh, where you fade in an image and then fade it out and uh, fade to something else. Uh, that's something that's not native to Pi Game, but I've written this program, written this script that you are free to use. Um, for your games. I've found a couple novel uh, novel uses for it. Uh, so I think it, I think it'll help you out a lot. Um, we're gonna split up this uh, this effect into two different videos. This first one I'm just going to talk about the crossfade effect, you know what it looks like and how I implemented it. And then the next one I will uh, show you how to implement it in in changing states and changing backgrounds. Um, so let's go ahead and right off the bat take a look of what it looks like. We've got uh, fading into the Nintendo logo and this this script that I've written uh, in my main I've made it so that if I press space it will reverse the fade direction so I'll press space and it fades out, fades in, fades out and it's dynamic because uh, our fade is a, cro uh, is a sprite that means that uh, it's going to update constantly um, what my original idea was is that I thought, oh, let's just, you know, let's just constantly blitz some black surface onto the screen. But because we're not clearing it, um, because we're not updating it from where it was a second ago, like you do with the sprite object in the Pygame library, um, it just blitted on top of each other. So it, even though we changed the transparency slowly, um, it just kept blitting on top of each other and making it slowly darker. Um, and I couldn't reverse it. And that's not what we want. We want it to smoothly fade uh, in and out. So let's take a look at uh, our object and see what it's built on. I have inherited the sprite class from uh, the Pygame library. I've got my doc string. Again, it synthesizes fades by incrementing the transparency of a black surface blitted on top of the screen. And uh, that's really how it is. Uh, it's really, that describes it perfectly. We're just going to uh, we're going to make the program change the transparency uh, by using the set alpha method in the Pygame library. Excuse me to to synthesize a fade. So let's go ahead and look at it. Uh, we initialize our sprite class uh, like you're supposed to anytime you inherit anything. I am passing our screen. I'm passing our window into uh, the constructor. I've put it up here. What I, reason why I've done that is because I want to make our black surface that we're gonna uh, we're gonna use as our as our fade, our black box that's gonna cover the window. I want to make that the same size as the screen, no matter what the screen is, uh, no matter what the screen size is. So no matter what uh, dimensions you put in this uh, uh, the, the display dot set set mode to make your window in Pygame, uh, this method screen dot get size will get that get those dimensions so that our fade is dynamic. Then we convert the, well first we set that as our image because using the sprite class the image and rect objects attributes are really important. So we're setting our image to be our surface which is the size of the screen. Then we are setting our, or we're converting our image to a usable format. That's something that you should do anytime you make any kind of image or any kind of surface. That enables us to use um, uh, this method, our set alpha, which is from the Pygame library, set alpha lets you change the transparency. It lets you change the alpha layer of a picture or uh, in our case just a black box. Uh, and it's black because we fill it uh, with black. Now let's take a look at some of the attributes I've made up. Um, we've got our fade direction. It's fading it in or out. We've got our transparency value. Uh, in the documentation of Pygame, it says that 255 is opaque and 0 is fully transparent. Then we've got our fade speed, our delay, and our increment. Uh, and these two, uh, increment and delay, are not peculiar to this specific uh, crossfade object. Uh, you would use something like an increment or I've seen it self.pause, which is basically increment is going to 
uh, it's going to go up by one every time update is called, which is every frame, hopefully, if Python is uh, doing its thing. So every frame increment is going to go up by one, and then you're going to use delay as a sentinel and say, if increment is delay, then change our animation. So like if you're running, like you're going to see in the next video, uh, if you're running with your sprite, you may not want it to go super fast. You may want it to look more natural, and that's how we do that. So these three attributes, self.fade uh, fade speed, self.delay, and self.increment are going to work together in order to give us a nice, clean fade. Uh, and we can you can adjust that if you want it to be a quick fade or a slow fade. Uh, by increasing the spade feed, I mean, sorry, the fade speed, you're going to... Uh, change the degree of transparency every frame. So right now I have it so that we're constantly uh, going subtracting six from 255, and then when we want to fade out, we're going to add six until we get to six uh, 255. Um, and I put my center at the middle of the screen. This can actually be it would be better represented instead of 320 by 240, which is what these are divided by two. Um, what would be better is if uh, these said screen dot get width divided by two, screen dot get height divided by two. Um, but that's not important. Let's look at our update uh, method. This is going to call every single frame. So every time this is called, we want to adjust the transparency. Um, dot self set alpha is how you do that. And then usually you put a number between 0 and 255, 255 being opaque and 0 being perfectly transparent. So we're using our attribute dot trans value so that we can increment this because every frame we want this, we want the, the opaqueness or the transparency of our black box to change. So as we change this value, our box is going to change its transparency and look like a fade. So again, like I said, every time update is called, our increment is going to go up by 1. And then we're going to check, is our increment greater than or equal to our delay? If it is, set it back to zero and fade it, either in or out. Um, down here in our code, um, what I've set up is our fade direction. Well, let's go up here. Our fade direction is the number one, and it can be any positive number. Um, but I've set it up as one. And so what happens is that when I press space, I'm going to multiply this by negative one. And if it's above zero, it's going to fade in. And if it's below zero, it's going to fade out. And that's what makes it dynamic, is all you have to do is change the direction, and it will start incrementing by our fade speed according to our delay and our increment. Um, so let's look at this. The first thing I do in both of these uh, conditionals is I make sure that we're not going out of the range of zero, between zero and 255. Um, so if if our trans value minus our speed is going to be less than zero, we're just going to set it to zero. If it's going to be above 255, we're just going to set it to 255. And then our trans value is going to change. Uh, in this conditional, it's going to subtract by our. It's going to subtract our fade speed, so it's going to fade something in because it's becoming more transparent. Remember, as we go towards zero, our trans our uh, our alpha our transparency is going to become more transparent. And then this is going to add it back in so that it becomes more black and fades out. Let's look at um, let's look at it one more time just so you can see it. Fades in nice, good. Fades out because I'm multiplying our fade direction by negative one. We'll look at one more thing. Um, let's try adjusting just so you can see how it works. Let's do the fade speed at 25. Let's see what that looks like. See, it comes in not nice and fast. And it's pretty smooth. Um, it, it, this is probably because I only have you know one sprite, which is the black box. Um, in my logo, I've just put in some variable, just used pygame.image.load, and used my Nintendo logo I got off the internet. So that's how the fade works. I'm going to show you one more little trick you can use, because in a game, you, you don't want to have to have the player press space excuse me, every time you want them, you want the fade to initiate or uh, fade out. So let's look at using a time delay. 
uh, in this program I've just copy and pasted our crossfade is exactly the same <laughs> I've made my logo uh, made my logo which is like I said I just loaded this image from the same directory that uh, this program is in and then I blit it to the screen then I make my fade object and I pass the screen in then I put that fade which is a sprite put it in this sprite group uh, and then I run my loop and then what I've done is I've used this method which is a really handy method in Pygame time.delay is basically whatever you put in whatever amount of time you put between uh, these parentheses is how much the game is going to stall basically um, and it's in milliseconds that's why it's 1500 and not 1 1.5 this is 1 1.5 seconds 1500 milliseconds so if you look at this what I'm gonna do is put my logo on the screen and then start my fade because my fade is going to update every single uh, every single frame that's what these three uh, methods do we're gonna clear it from where it was update it update its position update its information uh, and then draw to the screen but we're gonna start our fade and then once our fade equals zero which means it's transparent all we can see is the logo we're gonna wait a second and a half and then reverse the direction by multiplying by negative one. So let's look at that. Fades in nice and good. Wait a second and a half and fades out. And you can adjust that. Like I said, you can adjust this amount of time to be 500 milliseconds. And it'll be even quicker. So that's the first half of the crossfade. Uh, the next video, we'll look at using the crossfade to change between game states.